come to save the day. Welcome to Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. Join us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Periscope Live right now. Brought to you in part by Mr. Floor. And wherever you are watching, click the like button. And subscribe so you will be notified when we hit the air. Podcasts of all of our shows are available at MightyHouse.net, on Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and of course on HomeImprovementUSA.com. Find links to all of them at MightyHouse.net. You can leave comments and questions below and we will try to address them as they come in. Welcome to a special addition to uh to mighty house you can see quite the uh quite the change here um and this is what's going on this is the april fools edition rich robbie and ron look look they're burned out of doing the show but everyone's safe and healthy but look coronavirus cabin fever has gotten to the gang and now two strangers have stolen the show for them it's a mighty house takeover so who are you listening and watching now? Hello, I am Brock Winifield, co-host of the Climate Pod and marketing director at Hero Power, Illinois' easy and affordable uh, clean energy option. And with me today is a man I've literally known my entire life. He is my co-host on the Climate Pod and the co-founder and CEO of Hero Power, Ty Winifield. Ty, welcome to our Mighty House April Fool's Takeover Edition. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it feels like uh, deja vu. It just feels like we just did this uh, yesterday. <laughs> yes, I know. We, we, you and I, uh, we, we podcast quite a bit together. And, uh, you know, we've, I think we've done, this is our fourth podcast in quarantine, probably done about 50 outside of quarantine. I'm wondering when that number is going to surpass the other. So, <laughs> like, I know, uh, look, we know Ro- Robbie, Richie, and Ron, they're burned out of doing this show. They've relinquished their duties for a week. And don't worry, they're going to be back next week. But Ty, you know, you and I podcast together every week. And even in these quarantine times, we do countless meetings together. Uh, how burned out are you of hearing my voice? <laughs> it's not not so much the voice. But now that we're doing this podcast using Skype, I uh, I am sure that we will never do our podcast using live video again. Never. So. We will just stick to the audio medium. Uh, that seems to fit uh, both of our styles a little bit better. It especially fits better in these like quarantine times when there's no <laughs> access to getting uh, a haircut. Because right. uh, I got a real like uh, early 90s country music vibe going on where I, I'm just slowly <laughs> retreating into mullet territory. But what can you do? What can you do? I'm going to practice good social distancing and not get a haircut. Uh, in these in these times. So look, we hope that you'll tolerate uh, these two April Fools, these two fools on our April Fools edition because we do have a great show in store for you today. Um, how do you support renewable energy at no extra cost? Ty, the economy is obviously in an undeniable downturn. Money is tight across the country. People are looking to cut costs, right? Not take more costs on. So what can you do now that doesn't require you to spend extra cash uh, to help get more renewable energy on the grid and help this transition to cleaner, cheaper, and renewable generation sources? We're going to dig into that, Ty. We're also going to talk about like what we're seeing with regards to renewable energy during these coronavirus times. And uh, at, lastly, uh, you know, th- these guys, they do a great job of you know, talking about home improvements and renovations, all the really important stuff. Uh, we're not qualified to talk about that, but we are qualified to talk about this sort of the easy daily stuff you can do to save on uh, your electricity bill. So we're going to talk a little bit about some kind of the, the daily tasks that you can do because everyone's at home and they're using more electricity uh how are you doing at home are you uh, are you skyrocketing your electricity bill yet uh yeah because we're you know i'm here my wife's here we're trying you know we're using a lot of a lot of electricity drinking a lot of coffee <laughs> just running appliances that uh you know that we don't typically run 
all the time because we don't typically uh, work from home. So right. um, a lot of changes, but uh, hey, we're working through it and uh, everybody's healthy and that's really all that matters. But uh, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of things are changing right now. That's for sure. For sure. Well, I'm glad to hear everyone's doing well and is healthy. Uh, so going back to so talking about, so again, supporting renewable energy right now, no extra cost. Ty, whenever we start to talk to, to people about their ability to do that, it comes down to directly purchasing green power, right? And that always requires an explanation of what a renewable energy certificate is. Now, if you haven't installed solar panels on your roof yet, or you don't have a wind turbine spinning out clean energy outside, your home and your property isn't exactly generating renewable energy, right? But Ty, even if people haven't added renewable energy generation to their homes, that doesn't mean that they can't take a few extra easy steps now to support clean energy. And again, that's where the renewable energy certificate comes in. Ty, can you help us understand better, what is a renewable energy certificate? Yeah, we get this question all of the time. When we talk about Hero Power is a renewable electricity supplier, what, what exactly does that mean? And that basically means that we match 100% of our customers' electricity consumption with these renewable energy certificates. Basically, what a renewable cer energy certificate is, um, it's a certificate that says that a renewable electricity generator has generated 1,000 kilowatt hours of electricity from a source that is renewable, right? So that's going to come from a wind turbine or a solar panel or even something like um, hydraulic dam or something that's yeah. going to just produce electricity from something other than coal or natural gas. That's for the for the most part. Now, nuclear is not uh, renewable energy either, but uh, they get credit. These They get certificates saying, hey, we did this. We produced a thousand kilowatt hours of clean electricity. And then there's a market for these renewable energy certificates that companies like Hero Power purchase these certificates from. Uh, and that money goes to the renewable energy generators. And they basically use this as extra revenue for their, you know, their clean energy projects. And it's really, really important that to these renewable energy generators that they get this extra source of revenue um, because it makes the renewable energy products projects that much more financially viable, right? So they count on these future revenue streams from the renewable energy certificates uh, when they're making the you know, financial analysis of whether to build a new wind turbine or not. Um, so it's, it's critical uh, that we continue to support companies that are doing you know that are purchasing these renewable energy certificates so that the renewable energy generators can uh, you know continue to make the the decision so that so it continues to look financially uh, right. viable or really profitable for them to keep building these uh, renewable energy projects yeah because let's be honest building something like a wind turbine is really really expensive it's, up front right. and then it, then it's then you just create electricity all the time, so it makes cheap electricity eventually. Yeah. But again, you need that revenue stream. And I think one thing that we've seen since the implementation of these renewable energy certificates, which has been amazing, is that there's there's so many because we're, we're creating yeah. so much renewable energy, and we just there's still this renewable energy gap. We got to create more renewable sure. energy, but you got to retire these renewable energy certificates so that these generators get that revenue stream, get that that revenue that, like you said, that they baked in into their their financial analysis and again that's yep. why it's so important that we we find a way to uh to, to buy up these renewable energy certificates so they get that they get awarded for yeah. creating a cleaner better future with with more efficient and uh cheaper electricity yeah i mean there's no so it's not physically possible right to send clean electron there's no such thing as a clean electron right you can send that from the wind turbine directly to your home um, but what renewable energy certificates have enabled is basically the process for homeowners to send money to the renewable energy generators right and that is what is so critical obviously they need money so that they can make those you know investments and you, you said that those wind turbines are expensive they're three to four million dollars right so they're not cheap but 
Also, once they're up and running, there's basically zero marginal cost. Um, so we gotta let we gotta help them get that uh, get the funding for these you know for these new wind turbines um, because you know our electricity demand as a country is increasing. Yeah, it's going to continue to increase. Um, we are not on pace right now to you know meet even the the, the Paris Climate Accords, which is not you know now that we're looking back. Uh, the goals in that were probably a little too low. Um, but the scary thing to think about is that uh, a lot of the what we're calling, you know, clean energy now, almost almost half of the electricity that is considered clean. So that is, con- that is not fossil fuel generated. Right. That's not coal or natural yeah. gas is coming from nuclear power plants. Right. And and here in the U.S., there's really no new nuclear that's being built nuclear is just being retired over time so think about you know as our electricity uh, consumption continues to increase and the nuclear which is considered clean continues to decrease right you're just going to have that much more of a gap of a need for more renewable energy to fill that right so you can't let natural gas take the place of re- of these retiring nuclear power plants we must fill that with renewable energy so we're really you know we're we're we we'll have to truly double down on renewable energy because not only do we need to keep it growing to meet the growing consumer um, or growing consumption but we yeah. also need it to keep growing to uh, to make sure that we don't backfill that nuclear with uh, with fossil fuels yeah, I want to go back, and we're going to talk about uh, later in the show just uh, what we're seeing, especially during the last couple of months, of just how bad burning fossil fuels can be. But I'll go back to something you said there uh, about you know you can't add clean energy to the grid and then send it directly to your house. So why is that impossible? Yeah, just it's physically impossible. Um, electricity is unique in the sense that. As soon as it's generated, as soon as it's generated, it must be consumed immediately, right? So, like, like red wine. <laughs> exact opposite. It could not have been. That could not have been a worse example. It is the exact opposite of red wine. You cannot, you know, you can't let the electricity ferment and then age in a bottle for twelve years. Um, that's not how it works. And then tax it. Uh, increased taxes on French electricity into the United States to make French electricity not work. No, that's the exact opposite of, of how it works. Um, electricity, when it is generated, it must be consumed immediately. So that, you know, if there's a wind, let's say there's a wind turbine, you know, 50 miles away from, from here, and it starts spinning because there's a great gust of wind, and you flip on your lights, you might be getting some uh, of the electrons from that turbine to come and help turn your lights on. Yeah. But you also, when you turn those lights on, are getting electrons from the nuclear power plant that's 200 miles down, you know, downstate. Or you're getting some from the natural gas plant that might be 30 miles from you. Right. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a mix. The, you know, I, I love the pool analogy. I don't know if you like the pool analogy, but I love the pool analogy. It's basically think of a pool and there's a lot of hoses that are running into this pool right and it's just filling this pool with water each one of those hoses represents an energy source maybe one is you know is a coal plant one is nuclear one is um, renewable energy like wind or solar and once the water gets into the pool you can't tell you know the different water molecules from each other, right? It's just water at this point, right? And you just take a, you know, a cup out of the pool and it's a mix of all of the different yeah. um, sources, right? But what we're trying to do, what we really want to do is increase the size, right, of that uh, renewable energy hose so that we can get more renewable, so that renewable energy makes up a greater portion of the electricity that's on the grid as a whole. Uh, and that's, that is what's critical. You can't, you just cannot take, you know, electrons from one place to the next. Um, or you can't send them from one place to, to an X specifically or have any kind of control over that. But we can control the amount of electricity that gets to supplied to the grid. And that's why it's, again, so critical to keep 
supporting these renewable energy companies. Yeah, and again, you can do it directly with these renewable energy certificates. Like you said, that's why they were created. So government agencies and climate-focused companies, like these are the big consumers of these renewable energy certificates, right? Most states have at least some mandate that their utilities have to use at least some portion, right, of their energy purchases toward these renewable energy certificates or, or RECs for short. short. Um, so their, their citizens are supporting clean energy, right? In Illinois, in Comcast territory, though, Ty, it's actually only 6% of your electricity consumption that is matched with uh, these RECs. So it's uh, that's not much support at all. Yeah. Um, another big pur- 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 purchaser of these RECs are are private companies, right? They will buy RECs so they can say, hey, we match 100% of our electricity consumption. And that's a cool way of like, hey, we support clean energy the best way we can every time we pay our electricity bill. So an X, you know, so-and-so company is supporting clean energy. And then there's also uh, green electricity companies and green electricity suppliers, which full disclosure, that is what we do with Hero Power if you've not... (laughs) <laughs> You've not been watching the uh, the web page, but so how does a green electricity supplier work? What is what are these companies doing? Mm-hmm. So what we do is at Hero Power, we match a hundred percent of our customers' electricity consumption with renewable energy certificates. So we basically make two purchases on behalf of every one of our customers every month. We buy enough electricity to match our, you know, to to supply our customers with power. But then we also go and we purchase that on a market just like ComEd does. Um, But then we also go and we buy these renewable energy certificates, again, to match 100 percent of our customers electricity consumption. Um, Now, unlike ComEd, and this is basically where we begin to differ, uh, our rate is the exact same for renewable, for purchasing 100% of, you know, for matching 100% of our customers' electricity consumption with renewable electricity or renewable energy certificates. So we match 100%. We, ComEd matches 6%, but we charge the exact same rate as ComEd. Um, so our customers don't actually have to pay any more for supporting renewable energy every time they pay their electricity bill. Um, it's super simple. It could not be easier for a person to support renewable energy. They just, if they join Hero Power, they pay their ComEd bill every month just like they normally would. ComEd pays uh, pays Hero Power for the electricity supply, and then we pay the wind farm for the renewable energy certificates that we purchase. Um, so it's fairly, you know, it's fairly straightforward. But it for us, it was critical that. Um, customers do not have to choose between paying less and supporting renewable energy. Um, with Hero Power, customers pay the exact same rate um, as they would with ComEd, and they get to support renewable energy every time they pay their electricity bill. All right, let me pretend to be devil's advocate here and try to try to grill you, Ty, on the other on the end of the line. How do we? How do you know? How do you know? Uh, how do I know as a homeowner I'm actually supporting? renewable energy is it is it just you that's checking that these are actually these renewable energy certificates are unique and uh, actually coming from the place you say they're coming from no uh it is not me that's just checking this um so we are green e certified our electricity program the hero power clean energy program is green e certified and basically what that means is we have gone above and beyond we have met the highest standard for purchasing renewable energy certificates. Green E is uh, far and away the the, the national um, leader when it comes to auditing these renewable energy programs. Um, so what we've, you know, what basically we have to do is we have to get audited. We have to purchase our renewable energy certificates from generators uh, that have partnered with Green E. Um, and that basically means that, yeah, like you said, that these renewable energy certificates are unique. No one else is able to claim them, right? Once our customers consume um, a thousand kilowatt hours and we we retire one of those renewable energy certificates, it's never uh, retired again. There's no double counting with uh, with Green E renewable energy certificates. Um, The other thing that Green E uh, certification requires is uh, is truth in advertising, yeah. Um, which is, hey, that's crazy, right? But 
a lot of these isn't that you know, shouldn't that be law? <laughs> right. Yeah, you would think. Um, a lot of these green energy companies uh, aren't all that truthful in uh, telling their customers what they're purchasing. You know, they might tell them, hey, your you know, your house is being electrified by clean electrons, when in reality, that is not how it works. Um, there's a lot of, there are several, uh, you know, rules and restrictions as to what you can and can't say. But basically, right. green means like, you just got to tell the truth. Right. And, uh, and that's harder for uh, for many electricity companies than you might think, uh, or maybe you that's exactly how you think. Uh, but uh, by being Greeny certified, you're you're basically telling your customers, hey, we are actually purchasing and retiring the renewable energy certificates that we say we are. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and everything that we say as far as uh, what we're selling is uh, is accurate. So I'm um, so you know you're at home you've got a little extra time you're saying hey I might go and shop around and look at for one of these green electricity suppliers so what am I looking for one you're looking at your rate am I going to pay if you're a ComEd customer or if you're with another supplier am I going to pay more than the ComEd rate so basically am I going to be charged a premium just to say that I'm supporting clean energy in reality you don't have to there are suppliers out there there is a supplier out there uh, that that charges the same ComEd rate so you, again you don't need to be overcharged to support green electricity. Uh, we've obviously seen in Illinois, there's been a remarkable amount of overcharges uh, for these alternative electricity suppliers. I think Ty, in, since 2015 alone, Illinois residents have been charged more than $800. They've been overcharged for their electricity bills, which is uh, just is a wild, uh, a wild mission. And this is something that uh, your co-founder for Hero Power found out himself, isn't that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why we started Hero Power in the first place. Uh, a co-founder and I actually started another company um, about six years ago. Uh, that company supplied software to energy companies that helped their customers save energy. Um, and while we were running that company, yeah, my co-founder was actually a victim of one of these pricing scams. So a clean energy company had signed him up at one rate. Uh, there he is. There he is. Uh, there's Yan. Uh, they GN signed up at one rate and then he went is charged another rate and they end up overcharging him about 800 bucks over the year. And uh, luckily he was part of a, um, a class action settlement where he got most of his money back. But, um, yeah, like you said, billions consumers in Illinois have been overcharged billions as a result of these energy companies taking advantage of them. So Yan and I said, hey, look, look, we want to be able, we want people to be able to support clean energy because that's really important. Um, the great thing about deregulation here in Illinois is that customers do have a choice as to where right. their money goes, right? Not every state has that. Only 13 of the 50 U.S. states actually have the ability for customers or allow customers to choose their electricity supplier. So it's really important that clean energy suppliers exist in these states so that customers have the choice, have the ability to choose to support renewable energy. But if these clean energy suppliers are going to dupe their customers or they're going to behave in these you know, or have these bait and switch pricing uh, models, then no one is going to switch to a clean energy supplier. No one's going to support renewable energy. They're just going to stay with ComEd's 6% match with of renewable energy certificates. So we said, look, we need to start a company where you know our rate is tied to ComEd's rate. So we can never, we can never charge more than the ComEd rate. And our customers are confident that we'll never be able to charge more uh, and make it so that our our customers' consumption is matched with 100% renewable energy certificates. And, you know, we were a tech company. Uh, we basically took the tech that we were offering other energy companies yeah. and we said, sorry, uh, you don't get it anymore. It's only for Hero Power and only for Hero Power customers. And uh, we matched that with the renewable energy certificates. And now we're a renewable energy supplier in Illinois and uh, we could not be 
happier with the way things are have turned out for Hero Power and the uh, amount of momentum and excitement that we've seen already uh, in just the five months that we've been live here yeah. in Illinois. Um, how many people are excited to support renewable energy at the same rate with Hero Power? Well, again, it goes back to like if every green electricity company tells you that it costs more, and it does cost a bit more, but if they tell you that it's it's you know only profitable to uh, to charge people more than something like the ComEd rate, it's just it's not true. It's not true that you can't still make a, a profit and uh, and and still get a hundred percent of your electricity match with uh, those green e renewable energy certificates. Which brings up my second point: if you're shopping around, look for that green e certification again. That's Tyson said that is a way to double check that those renewable energy certificates are unique that they're actually getting retired that they are where they say they're from and that you're being marketed to and sold to in a way that is accurate um that's an extra step and an extra measure but if you're looking around and you you want to be you want to make sure you want to double check that you're buying what you think you're buying that green e certification is something that any company can can get that's uh selling renewable energy energy certificates. So again, you want to look for that as well. And, uh, you know, this whole process, looking around, you can have a lot of fun comparing uh, comparing companies and it's looking at different options. It's a blast. I mean, what more? <laughs> I can't think of anything. It's it's really just the, uh, the, the, the great virtual experience. But yeah. Signing up takes two minutes, yeah. so if you, uh, it's very easy to once you find a company that you want to check out. But uh, you know, Ty, in this in these times during the coronavirus, we have seen um, just how important renewable energy is, right? And I was I was struck, you know, we, we, as we mentioned, we co-host the Climate Pod, it's a weekly climate and environmental podcast. And I was talking to uh, doc, Dr. Marshall Burke, who's at Stanford. And he released a, a study that made uh, kind of national uh, uh, waves, basically looking at emissions in China in January and February. And, and of course, it was, you know, he released this in early March. Now you can unfortunately see the same effect across the globe. But in China in January and February, we saw dra a drastic decrease in emissions. So what basically this meant was like, you know, when the economy takes a downturn, when everyone has to go into quarantine and isolation, uh, you know, people are not driving, businesses are shut down, the economy isn't running as it should. And that's a terrible thing. That's a really bad thing, especially when we think about the long term impact, what that means for people, for everyday people. In the short term, it does provide one health benefit. When there are far fewer emissions, uh, there are far fewer premature deaths. In China alone, if you just calculate the uh, deaths from the coronavirus in, in January and February and match them with the, the deaths that were avoided by uh, the lack of air pollution, it's actually 20 times more lives were saved. But again, that's that seems like, oh, that's a great thing, but it, it's short term because it's, again, once stimulus packages kick in, once economies go up and running, you're just going to lose that short-term benefit. There's going to be even more pollution above even average levels. This is not a. It's not a good thing. I, I heard it. I heard it best compared. I think by an Axios reporter. It's like it's like losing weight when you're sick, right? It shouldn't. It can't continue, and it shouldn't continue. What it tells us is that there's a real cost to the status quo. And what it underlines is the importance of things like a transition to clean energy. Because again, if we were all driving affordable electrical electric cars, we wouldn't have those vehicle emissions. If we all take public transit that was, was entirely electric, we wouldn't have those vehicle emissions. If, we, if all these businesses were being powered by renewable energy, we wouldn't have to burn coal and natural gas which literally pollutes our air to the point where it, it causes premature death. Now, obviously, we talked about clean energy. It's, it's, it's you know, it's renewable and it's uh, it, it, it lowers costs and it makes us more energy dependent. But, man, what did you think when you saw that study uh, as it relates to the importance of clean energy? Well, yeah. And I mean, the other thing is the, you know, the fact that all of these, um, you know, the, the pollution, right, that is being generated by these fossil fuel plants is what's causing the underlying pro right. problems in the first place right the asthma the respiratory disease these the people that are that have these uh, underlying conditions that are that are related to respiratory issues they're the most vulnerable to the coronavirus right. and so that, i mean it, it's just 
there's this weird relationship is our relationship here between um, pollution and the coronavirus. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the sad part is the fact that, um, you know, that our economy, so much of our economy runs on these fossil fuels. And uh, when when the alternatives exist, right, we don't have to do these things. Um, there are cost effective alternatives. Um, the power right. of, you know, the cost of renewable energy has fallen drastically over the last, you know, decade, really. Oh, it's plummeted. Um, yeah, it's plummeted. And so much of that so much of that is because of investment, right? Federal investment in renewable energy uh, projects or research. Um, some of it, it, so much, so much of it is because of there's just so much greater adoption, right? Yeah. As more and more renewable energy is being purchased, the money goes back to these renewable energy companies. They're able to invest in uh, newer technology, more efficient tech technology, and we just move down that learning, help, we help them move down the learning curve faster. Um, so it's this it's this fantastic positive feedback cycle where the more clean energy that's purchased, the cheaper it becomes, which makes it more viable and more people want to purchase it, and then it becomes more and more cheaper, more and more, yeah, it becomes yeah I guess you're saying. Yeah. Well, and that's so, why you have state advocates that are that are sort of advocating for a greater adoption of clean energy now so that they, literally we pay lower electricity bills, which is great, right? Right. right. Yeah. Advocates are advocating. So you don't have to. No, no, <laughs> no reason for making, making fun of my uh, my word uh, mess that came out of my mouth and still is. Um, but, yeah, that's right. I mean, that's what's so. Um, that's what's so important as as these states pass renewable energy uh, standards, right, or federally as we pass these renewable energy standards, then we get more and more people that benefit from them. And then we get more and more people that become advocates. And again, these positive feedback loops uh, is what we need for renewable energy. Uh, and, you know, in in spite of or in the face of uh, all of the um, you know the pushback from the fossil fuel companies yeah. that are just trying to uh, keep a dead industry alive. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of sad to see what uh, you know what they're doing uh, and what they've been able to accomplish under the current administration. But um, you know, it is clearly a dead or dying industry, and all of the potential economic growth, job growth is in the renewable energy industry, and that's where we should be putting our money. But we're still seeing right now, whenever there's an economic downturn, that it, that makes it a uh, more murkier or ambiguous or even darker outlook for renewable energy, right? Like renewable energy, part of this, as we mentioned, if part of this can take for if you're if you're at the, like the industrial level, large upfront costs, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a great. There's so much more uncertainty. I mean, I think about like the, the average person, the average homeowner, if they're thinking about solar panels, if money's a little tighter, that can be harder. Because even though you're sure. going to have a, a, a remarkable benefit long term, everyone should get solar panels and take advantage of Illinois state programs to do so. But, uh, you know, that's again, that can take an upfront cost or cost over time, which when money's tighter, people worry about. Right. So the, the industry is, is taking a hit. And again, that's why um, we couldn't be more passionate about finding ways to support clean energy without actually having to go into your pocketbook. If, if again, if you're having to make tough choices, and I know a lot of people are right now as we go through the, uh, literally, we just finished the, literally the most volatile financial month in the history of mankind. So, yeah, great. Um, yeah, but yeah, it, it just kind of underlines that importance. But Ty, we also want to talk about, like, even if you, um, you know, if you can't support, you're not, we're not wanting to support clean energy, but again, a lot of people are at home. And if you're at home, you're not, uh, you're not getting the benefits of being away and not using electricity. Uh, you know, coffee pots are, are going, people are turning on lights. Uh, look, some spouses more than others are keeping uh, lights on for a longer period of time. We'll discuss that on another podcast. <laughs> Nevertheless, some people are leaving refrigerators open too long, but uh, look, I digress. Uh, people want to save money. And there are so many everyday ways you can do that if, if, if you're if you're starting, if you're in the if you're in the planning stage of remodels and renovations, like now's a great time to do planning for those jobs if you can't get those jobs done. But everyday 
habits. The first thing that I've been thinking about mostly is just like how underutilized natural light is in most homes. Now, it depends. It kind of varies how good your home is suited for the, you know, using natural lights. So, uh, you can tell I've, uh, don't, you know, I've got a window behind me, but, um, <laughs> with the blind clothes don't do that don't do that i'm doing it for uh for skype uh, skype quality issues but use natural light as much as possible we're still you know we're still getting weather in the 40 degrees in illinois um it gives you two benefits one of course like more light the less lights you have to turn on which again we have to be thinking about that as we're dramatic we're using dramatically more electricity and turning with you know lights on for much longer than we are expected but also that natural light during the daytime can add heat to your home those sun rays come in if uh and it's also a good reminder if you've got extra time clean your windows because that actually can allow more sunlight to come in as well that actually is a, that's an additional heating source so look i mean it's in the 40 degrees some people some of us uh, myself uh still have are running heat through part of the day keep those blinds open keep the uh, keep them open and then if you are heating your home uh make sure you have your blinds and curtains shut at night that helps trap air or keep air from uh going out your window so it's, again it's just an easy home hack but it can be it can frankly be underutilized you can tell again i have the the blind clothes so uh if if you're not using that natural light during the day you really are missing out it's one good tip that I just check every day am i am i getting as much natural light as possible tie another one another big one is making sure you're not losing electricity to what we call vampire energy. Can you explain to the listeners what vampire energy is? Uh, yeah, basically there are appliances that continue to consume power even though they're not being used, right? So like a lot of your appliances with um, digital interfaces with you know maybe a clock or even you know those appliances that have um, the little LED light bulbs on them that are on all the time. Any appliances like that uh, is going to be consuming electricity, uh, even though they're not being used. Uh, one of the biggest ones in the kitchen is your coffee pot. Um, your coffee pot consumes a lot of electricity, um, even though you're not making coffee with it. So um, unplug it. Unplug things that are not, uh, you know, electrified things that are not in use. It's going to, uh, it'll shave three or 4% yeah. off your electricity bill every month. And that can add up. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but um, you know, if that's, if that's uh five, if your, you know, electricity bills, a hundred bucks a month, you know, five bucks a month, that's 60 bucks for a the difference. year. It does make a difference. It really does. These kinds of things add up and they can uh, definitely help you save electricity or save money, save electricity uh, and even lower your carbon footprint. So uh, it's a win, win, win. 60 bucks, man, that could almost pay for uh, a night at a restaurant that you can't go to right now. So. Right, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> video game consoles, video game consoles. I know a lot, look, yeah. I know a lot of people who are playing more video games. Don't leave, <laughs> don't keep those plugged in. That, those right. use an incredible amount of electricity while they're not being used. Uh, another right. one, you know, computers versus laptops. If you have the ability to choose, if you have a computer, if you've got a desktop computer and you have a laptop, keeping a desktop computer plugged in actually uses far more electricity than your laptop. Uh, so if you can charge up that laptop and conserve electricity and then unplug the charger and use that laptop more, you are going to save quite a bit of electricity in the long run. That's right. And they're and they're they're less heavy too. So uh, if you have that computer sitting on uh, the desktop sitting on your lap while you're on the computer or on the couch is just uh, it's way less comfortable than a laptop. <laughs> it's so true. It's so it's true. just a good point. I mean, it's just a, a good point, point in general. You know? It's a good point in general. Um, I know you probably keep your uh, your your indoor temperature at like 52 degrees. Even uh, you probably have the windows open today, <laughs> even though it's 40. Uh, Sorry about that. How are we looking? Good? So yeah, you probably have uh, the windows open, 
the 40 degree air coming in. But uh, me, I like it at like a, uh, at a nice uh, 77. Uh, don't do that. Don't Perfect. do that. Your heating bills, you know, if you're still running the heat like I am, uh, your heating bills are going to be more while you're at home more. Keep it at 68 if you can. Obviously, that's, you know, it's not the most comfortable temperature for everyone. I will admit I'm in that group. But you can keep it at 68. It's kind of the optimal temperature to at least keep things comfortable and still be energy efficient. Right. But Listen you don't to uh, President Jimmy Carter. Put a put a sweater sweatshirt, on. sweater on. Or listen to uh, J.B. Smooth on Curb Your Enthusiasm and keep it at a warm 82 degrees. Or don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, don't listen to J.B. Smooth. Uh, <laughs> but in, uh, in every other capacity. Um, but when you go to sleep at night, uh, you could actually, if you drop your your temperature a little bit lower, and we recommend being about 60 to 67, you can save uh, like you know a percent for every. Uh, for every degree you're going down as, as well. So that's that's huge. And Ty, here's here's the added benefit. If it's between 60 to 67 degrees, it'll actually make it easier to fall asleep. So while we're in this, uh, while we're amidst of this uh, just constant existential panic, if you're finding it hard to go to sleep at night and you want to save money on your energy bills, just you know, just turn the uh, turn, turn the temperature down just a little bit. That is a that's a great tip. That's fantastic. What else? Again, what else? Win wins. Do? These are win wins. These are right? huge win wins. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, oh, we have on the blog. You can look at even more tips uh, and and things that people do. Look, if you've got if you've had LED light bulbs laying around that you just haven't found time to put in, now is now is the time to be uh, doing as much as possible around the house to save money on those energy bills so uh anything else anything else you can think of we can we can leave the listeners with to uh to help their homes become more energy efficient and uh and, and lower the bills as uh as we continue to stay home i guess uh, you know you can still go out and uh walk around and get outside so as temperatures become warmer and it becomes even more fun to walk outside as long as again as long as you keep that six foot uh, social distance separation, uh, even getting outside more can help just lower your electricity bill. So that's, sure. uh, that's a good one, right? Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, when there's a, there's a whole slew of, uh, energy efficient tips that, uh, we hope to take advantage of if it ever warms up here in Illinois, yeah. um, which it will, uh, in August, but, uh, uh, yeah, there's there's all kinds of ways for people to um, to to save energy in the summertime uh, to to reduce their cooling costs because so much of our electricity consumption is over fifty percent is related to heating and cooling. Yeah. So if you can do things in your home to you know to better insulate your home to make your home uh, you know to seal any kind of cracks things like that, um, those are always the best ways to save you know save money on your electricity bill. Um, but uh, not everyone has the ability to quickly you know to quickly add insulation or sealant or anything like that. So these are you know these we've provided some tips today to help people save. Uh, money instantly and with no cost. Uh, but like Brock said, at the Hero Power website, we've got a ton of great tips, a ton of great content on how people can save electricity because that is, you know, that another thing that we want, you know, that Hero Power wants to do is and not only enable people to support renewable energy, but we want people to reduce their energy consumption right. overall because as i mentioned earlier you know as our electricity consumption needs continue to increase we have to you know we're going to have to meet that energy demand with something and if we can lower demand it just makes it easier for us to kind of meet that overall demand with renewable energy so just kind of keep those things in mind um, all those tips are available on the hero power blog uh, and if you ever decide to join Hero Power, you actually get rewarded for every one yeah. of those articles that you read. Um, and we don't uh, we don't often talk about the the Hero Power app, but that's the thing that made my previous company uh, so successful is that yeah. we basically helped our customers become smarter energy consumers, and people love it. I mean, you know, it sounds it sounds crazy, but our customers spend about 23 minutes a month on our web and mobile apps. Yeah. And they're, what they're doing is they're learning ways to become smarter energy consumers. And I know that sounds like a whole lot of time. 
uh, to be interacting with your energy company. Uh, but that's because our our customers love interacting with us. Um, and that's it just sounds uh, that sounds crazy. Well, but, let's, uh, we've got a lot of great tips on there. Well, and let's be honest, at, at times like this, it's easy to kind of understand what you should be doing and know those like everyday easy sure. tasks. It's another thing to be reminded what to do right. and have that be part of your daily r uh, routine. You know, get something like a push notification that tells you, oh, this little simple thing. that of course, I know how to do. Yep. I just I've just gotten that reminder and now I will do it. And it helps me remember. I mean, I forget everything. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's nice to have reminders that you're not uh, carelessly wasting electricity at this time when people are trying to make conservation choices and and save money as much as possible right that's right yep there we all need uh, a little help on becoming better right and hero power wants to help you become a better energy uh, consumer a smarter energy consumer and uh, we've developed this this uh, platform but really we've developed a community of people who are fighting for a cleaner energy future and that's what you can be a part of uh, if you join hero power now Ty, there's something uh there's a little term people are using called the covid 19 which is the 19 pounds that people are going to gain in quarantine how can hero power help you stay uh away from eating chocolate all the time while you're in quarantine no unfortunately oh. it cannot uh or i would uh <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely can't. Save <laughs> which is a, which is another reason why we'll not be doing video on the uh, on the climate pod. Uh, we're gonna stick to audio because your voice doesn't change when you pick up the COVID nineteen. That's for I, sure. Yeah, sooner or later I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna fit in the. My face isn't gonna fit in the frame. It's just gonna keep <laughs> widening out to the uh, the webcam ratio is no longer viable for. <laughs> Uh, for video chat. So uh, that's just the thing that's going to happen. So, uh, but also, Ty, I mean, I just want to add, you know, just because people have, li they've listened this long, they've, if they've suffered through our conversation this long, uh, anyone that m mentions Mighty House, if they sign up for Hero Power, they're going to get $25. So actually make, you know, make money off uh, changing their electricity bill. So it couldn't have been, again, we couldn't have been happier to take over the show today talk about all these subjects. We're thinking of everyone out there who's trying to save electricity, trying to still support renewable energy despite these uh, tough times and uh, cannot thank the Mighty House gang more for allowing us this takeover. And uh, and what, a, what a, you know, to the extent that people are going to tolerate April Fool's jokes this year, hopefully this was a tolerable April Fool's joke. What do you think, Ty? Uh, yeah, I, I saw uh, on the internet today that today is actually March 32nd. Uh, that we're not doing April Fools this year uh, because uh, this year has been wild enough uh, as it is. So, but uh, now this is a great opportunity to come on the show. Uh, we love the show. I've been on the show before. You have been on the show. Before. I have, yeah. And uh, and on that one, the uh, you know I was only on there for a few minutes, um, but they have me back, so that's that's fantastic. Um, but again, like Brock said, um, if you we. You know, if you want to support renewable energy, you can do so in less than two minutes. Head to our website, it's myheropower.com, uh, and then tell us that you heard about us from the Mighty House uh, radio show or podcast. And when you do that, we'll take $25 off of your first electricity bill so you get instant savings. Yeah. Two minutes, 25 bucks. And again, you can see there, you can follow us at Get Hero Power on Twitter and at My Hero Power on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks to Ron and the gang again for letting us host. And they will be back next week. You will no longer have to hear or hear our voices or see our faces. <laughs> Thanks again to the gang for uh, allowing us to the show. 